Hello everyone and welcome to Golden Herb Studios. In this episode we'll be adding an attack system to our character so that we can switch between punching and using our sword. So starting off we're going to need some animations. So let's head over to Mixamo. If you don't already have the character uploaded you can download the files down below. There's a link in the description. And in there you'll find everything you need including the blueprints that we'll be using today. And then you can also find the mesh that you can use. So let's just hit Upload, select character file, and then mine is on my desktop, Lego tutorial, and then select that and open it up. And then once that's loaded up, you can see that it's automatically already. Click next, next, and there he is. And then you just want to type in me the combo. And I'm going to do this one where he swings back and forth and then down. And this is built for a bigger guy. And we're using a smaller person. So we're just going to bump up the overdrive just a little bit, just to make it look a little bit more natural. And then once you're ready with that, you can click download without skin. And then we also want a punch combo for when he doesn't have his sword equipped. So you just type in punch combo. And I just did the first one right here because I think it looks the best. And then once you find the one you want and adjust all the settings, you can click download without skin and then download. And then heading over to our project, we're just going to go to character, Lego guy, and then over here we have all of our animations. Right click, import, go to downloads or wherever you downloaded them. Select the punch combo and the standing melee. Open them up. Make sure that the Lego guy skeleton is selected. And then import all. Alright, and now you can open it up and see that it's working great. That looks really good. And then to make this work with our character, we're going to head over to the blueprint, PP third person. And then we're just going to open that up. And then what we want to do is right click on the character and we just want to show and explore and then we're going to drag that off to the side open up the lego tutorial folder open the blueprint and then you just want to copy and paste that into our other folder so then when you come back you can see that it's in there it says all of the code that we will need this is from my from my aragon game project i was just too lazy to show you how to do it so i'm just going to give it to you for free but we will walk through how to do it so you understand what's going on all right, so we're just gonna copy and paste everything. And then when you come over here, you're just gonna wanna delete this stuff. And you just wanna drag this up as well. Use bits and pieces of that later. And then you just wanna paste, create matching functions. And then you can see that we have everything in here. And you can see that it created functions for us. And we actually don't need those because they're in here. So the first thing we need to do is create a player info, which just stores all of the information, which makes it a lot easier than keeping it in the blueprint. So we're just going to go to the content and we're going to create a new folder called blueprints. Double click on that and right click and we're going to create a blueprint class. We want an actor. And we're going to call this player info. And then you want to open that up. And the only thing we really need in this is the variables because this is just going to store uh, all of our variables in here. So what we want to do is in the get actor of class, we want to then type in player info and drag that into there. Alt click. And then here we want to cast to the NMBP. So we'll do cast to Lego NMBP and then promote to variable. And over here, we just want to click on this and create variable. There we go. So that's looking good. And then down here, we don't actually need this. We're just going to delete that. And then here we want to select our sword and then slide that into there. Alt click and create variable. And then we just want to make sure that this is plugged in. Let's we'll drag this down, put this over here. And then this is dragging down here, which is just the default stuff. And then moving over here to combat, we need to create an enhanced input action so we're going to come compile we want to go to third person input and then actions i'm just going to copy and paste that and i'm just going to call that attack and then we're going to the imc default double click on that open up the mappings i'm going to add one and we're going to do attack click on that and then i'm just going to do the left mouse button for attacking you can pick anything i'm just going to do that and then we're done for that you can close those and then go back to the bp third person character and we want to search for enhanced input attack and then you want to do the enhanced action events attack and then just delete that and drag out of triggered put that over there and then over here we want to get the sword again and then drag off there alt click compile and then right here we just want to create variable create variable compile and then for this we already created these in the other episode so don't create variable and then we just want to come into here and we want to use the sword hand socket so you can delete that let's do the sword hand socket compile 
and then we want to select the sword and then we're good for this one and then moving on to the attack so it looks good we want to create a variable for attack index and set the fight walk speed and just compile we already set that and the walk speed create variable and then that looks good we'll come back and set the anim montage right now we're just making sure all the variables are set up and then for punch all of this looks good and sword on back we just want to control drag into there that one popped out and then i'm just going to come down here and click on that see what's wrong with that and looks like the sprint needs one as well so we're just going to copy and paste call it sprint go back to the default and then come up here we're going to add one and we're going to do sprint i'm going to do shift save that close that and then coming over here we're going to do the same thing and we're going to do enhanced input events sprint and delete that out of triggered and you can see that we're getting the mana and we're just going to delete this because we're not doing the mana in this episode we just want to we just want to plug it into start and then right click and create a sprinting compile and now here's a bunch of mana stuff we don't need this and then opening up start sprint you just want to set the walk speed dragging off of character movement and you need to create the variable for sprinting speed and then add the sword on back and make sure is sprinting is set and we might have to change this later but for now this is looking good and then on the event tick i just don't need any of this this is all for mana stuff making the sprinting and then we're just going to click on this down here to see what's going on all right so for this this is making it so it'll go on the back so we need the sword compile that looks better and then sheath name we actually need this one create sheath socket and this is where it'll go like on your back or side like when you're running because you don't want that in your hand and then we're just going to go to third person content characters like your guy we want to go to skeletal mesh and we're going to create a new socket and i'm just going to do a spine 04 so right click on that add socket i'm going to call this back socket and then just copy that because we'll need that later add a preview asset we're going to do sword and you see that's huge so we're going to come over to our other one to see what we scaled that to. And you can see that we did 0.2. You can scale that down and then we're just going to rotate this so it looks better. And drag it out. And I'm actually just going to scale this down just a tiny bit. It's like 0.18. Not a huge difference, but just a little bit. And then I just want to see if this will work for the shield as well. If it doesn't match perfectly, you'll have to click on the spine and add another socket. That will be separate, but hopefully we can save some work and it will just work and you can see that doesn't work so we're just going to have to click on spine 04 add socket and we're going to click back shield socket and then same thing right click add preview asset we're going to have the shield and then let's scale it down to like 0.2 and then just rotate it and then if you want to see it with animation come up to preview preview controller use specific animation we'll just do walk and you can see that looks good so then moving on we just want to copy and paste these we're just doing the sword right now let's make sure that one is selected it was back socket or whatever you named it so paste that into there and that's just plugged into both of those come over to the event begin play and we just need to click on this click on the variable type and type in pp sword 01 and change variable type and it'll go through and just change all of those automatically there we go and then compile and then we need to come over here and on the sword on back and then just drag that off of there and i can see that works compile and you can see that we have no issues except for that one but that doesn't matter so we can just play an editor and then we just need to set up the animations so we need to come over to all right so then we just want to right click on this and we want to create an montage and then we're just going to click on the anim montage and then we just want to go where it ends so it comes up, swings, and we're going to come here, add notify, montage notify, and then we're going to come and count that as a swing, add notify, montage notify, and then his final swing, let's do right there, add notify, montage notify, and then in the third person, we want to come up to attack, and then we want to select the standing melee montage, and same for here. And then we want to do the same for the punching. So right click on that, create an montage, click on that, and then 
it's going to punch. So we add a notify, or another one. And then we just want to right click on this and open asset. And we just want to crop up the spot where he stops punching. So he stops punching about there. We're going to right click and remove frames. So now it just punches and it ends. And we can save that, come up here. And then we want to come to punch. And then we're going to select our punch. And down here, so one will be punching and a sword will be on his back. And two will be his sword. And then we'll jump to his hand, click play. You can see that he punches. And the more you click, the more he punches. So I click, does that, click more, keeps punching. If I click two, you can see that kind of broke it. So we'll see what's going on with that. So when we press two, the sword is true. So we come to this one, pass the punch. And if if the sword is equipped already, which means that we've already pressed two and already attacked, then we can just, just go straight to attacking. If it's not, we want to make sure that it is equipped. And this is where we're going to attach the sword to the character. So we just need to make sure that these are plugged into here like that. And then if we compile and play, it should work now. Punches, click two. You can see that it goes to the sword. So I click once, does that, click twice, does more. And you can see that we're going really slow. And that's just the speed that's set to when you're attacking. So that means that it's not going back to the regular speed when we're not attacking. So we need to come through here and you can see that the walk speed is set to zero. We set that to 500. And then we also forgot to select the standing montage, which we need to do that for this one for the punching. So that's all set up. And now let's try that again. We punch. We're still walking slow, even when we do this. So to fix the issue, we just need to drag off the falls, get a delay about 1.4, and then plug that in. And then for the punching, we want to do the same, but we just want to set it for 0.2. And then once you play, and you can see when you punch, you can walk normal afterwards. And when you swing, you can swing normal afterwards. So that's all for the attack system. Now we're just going to quickly shift over to the sprint. And then for sprinting, Super simple, we just have the enhanced input for sprint. And then in the start sprint, we just set the max walk speed that comes off of the character movement. And then we put the sprinting speed in, set sprinting to true. And then we want the sword on back event and then stop sprint. We do the same thing from character movement, set max walk speed, and we just set that to the max walk speed. And then set sprinting to false. So if we compile, save, if we walk around and push shift, you can see we go faster. If we let go, we slow down. And you can see that the animations aren't changing. And that's because we just need to go into the LEGO BS. And the animations aren't playing for some reason, but we have the same animations. We don't have a run. So we just want to delete the last one. And we just want to come up to Mixamo and we want to get it run. And we just want to take in place, download without skin. And then coming back over here, we want to import downloads running open. Make sure that our LEGO guy is selected and import all. And then I'm just going to click this and drag it into the LEGO PS and just drag it all the way to the back. And then our walk speed is set to 500. So we just need to set this to 500. And before we can go any further, you can see that we had set our max to 500. We just want to set that to 1000. So we can move that all the way there. And then we want to set this to 500. When we play, you can see it's walking. When we sprint, it's doing his running. And now he's walking. And that looks pretty good. So he can punch, sprint, walk. And then he can also do his sword thing. And then real quick, since we've already made the base of everything else, we just need to add the shield. So I'm just going to duplicate the sword on back and paste that. I'm just going to call this shield on back. And then I'm just going to call this shield on back as well. And then on the start sprint, I just want to get shield on back. And then over on event begin play, I'm just going to do shield on back as well. And then first we're just going to change this to the shield. And then we want to copy, paste that, and just call that shield back. And then we're just going to drag that into there. And we need to go to the Lego guy skeleton. And, and we just called that back shield socket. So we can come over here and paste that into there. And then we just need to make sure that the blueprint is dragged in and not the mesh. 
And then we also need to come over here and drag that over. I'm just gonna duplicate that, drag it in. And we want to get the shield. I'm going to promote variable and we're gonna name it shield ref, plug it in. And then we're gonna come over to shield on back and we're gonna get the shield ref and just drag that into there. And now you can see when we click play, it's on there. And if we punch, it stays on. If we do the sword though, however, it doesn't, it just stays on the back. I would need it to jump to the hand. So we're going to come over to attack. And in here, before we go to attack, we're just gonna drag out some more space. We're just gonna duplicate all of that. And then where that starts, we're just going to take this, starting from here, and then duplicate it, drag it over. And I'm just going to rename this to a shield. And this is just for debugging. It's not required for the code. It just helps if it doesn't work later on. And then we want to drag our shield ref into there and change this to our shield. And then we want to change it to the shield socket. And then coming back to this, I want to plug it in, drag that back in. And when you compile and play, you can see it works good. If you go to two, you can see up there, it says it's not valid. And we just need to do what we did up here. You can see that we set it again. So we're just gonna drag back here so we can get some more room. Just drag that back and then copy, paste, put that up there. We want the shield. And then we just want to set the shield ref again. I'm not sure why, but you have to do this every time. And that just helps so it doesn't have the not valid. So if we go back, you can see now it's working. And then one last thing that we need to do for the punch, you can see that we're setting the sword to the back. We need to move the shield to the back as well. So we're just gonna come over here and then shield on back. So you can see that we started like this, but now we've made it even more advanced. We can sprint and everything jumps to the back. If we hit one, we can punch. If we hit two, we can attack and it works very nice. All right, so for now, this is going to be the end of the series. I'm gonna take a little break from it. Unless you guys have some more tutorials for the series that you'd like to see, I'm gonna start making some other videos about Blender and Unreal Engine. So make sure to check those out as well. Again, if you have any ideas for anything that could go further in this series, comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.